Hey everybody, just wanted to make a quick video about universal architecture. <laughs> yeah, quick video on that. No, universal architecture and why it's important. Universal architecture simply means our universes, our multiverse, the dimensions in which we live, parallel universes and all of that. These spaces, this architecture is simply a landscape and a landscape into which our higher selves dispatched aspects of itself in order to have experiences and to have lessons and to further create. So this dimension that you and I live in right now, which is this third dimensional reality, this is a dimension that we actually created as our I am self. And we created it so that you and I could be here now living this life. And we have a lot of people, don't we, questioning, well, why would I be born into this life? And why would I want to experience this challenge and this pain? I talked a little bit about this last week. Well, the reason is, is that all experiences are worthwhile. All experiences are truly valuable and the higher self sees the value in it. And I also mentioned in last week's video that Earth is a high level learning space. It is a school and it's a school where we, in a very short amount of time, which is the time of a human life, the span of a human life, we are able to learn at an incredibly rapid pace. Yes, it's difficult. Yes, it's confused, and yes, we can find ourselves lost, but there is a reason to go through that challenge, but there's also a reason to find our way back into alignment. Really, Earth is a great place for us to learn how to realign and to continually realign to our divine nature. That is ever, that is always the work of the life. It is too examine what is happening in the life and then realign back to the I am position, which is the divine nature of who it is that we are. And the reason understanding universal architecture is so important is when we know that we created this, we can feel empowered to exist in this, correct? When you know I created this house, I know everything there is to know about this house. I know where every room is. I know what experiences are going to happen in each room. When you've created it, you feel empowered to occupy the house. And so let's talk about the creation and, and how that actually happened. In the beginning of everything, there was a pure consciousness. We can call this consciousness a singularity. We can call this consciousness source energy. We can call this consciousness God. It doesn't matter. The consciousness doesn't need you to call it anything for the consciousness is and the consciousness always will be. And the consciousness existed in pureness, in its I am self. And at some point and for whatever reason, pure consciousness, God energy decided to move decided in specific to vibrate in a specific way and to create and thus creation took place. Creation actually took place in phases, many, many phases. And we're only going to talk about two here. Okay. The first phase of creation is when source energy or this pure consciousness created the archangels. The archangels are truly the sons and the daughters of God and the first being out of the archangels, the first thing ever created by pure I am consciousness, God energy was and is Archangel Michael, which is why we, we really look to Michael for protection, which is why we see Michael's appearances in various sacred texts in various religions. Michael is the preeminent archangel, truly the firstborn son of God. This is another reason Michael is often mistaken for Christ, because Christ too is a son of God. Michael was the first being created, and then of course the whole host of the archangelic which did not include at the time, <laughs> Metatron and Sandalphon, which are the only two archangels that were actually humans to begin with. And they transmuted. They literally ascended and became archangels at a later time. And then came the next phase of creation. And it's interesting and pay attention here because this is powerful. At some point, source energy or God energy and the 
totality of the archangelic, all of the archangels decided to bring into being another creation phase, creation phase number two, if you will. And they did so by commingling their energies, not unlike a mother and a father would commingle their energies to bring about the birth of a new creation or a baby. And so the archangels and God had a hand in this next phase of creation into which were born, if you will, the oversouls among other consciousnesses as well. But the oversouls, why is this important? Because you, my friend, have an oversoul. You, as you truly are, are an oversoul. This is your I am nature. This is your pure consciousness. You were created in the image of source energy and the archangelic. This is why we have in Genesis the scripture that confounds so many Christians because it reads, and God said, let us make man in our image. And I recall coming up through the church, people saying, well, Who's us? There's only one God. There can be only one God. You know, these are literalist personalities kind of thinking within the confines of a box. They didn't understand who us could possibly be. And there was some additional teaching about Elohim and so on and so forth. But what us is truly and simply is you and me and the archangels and all other beings that were conscious at that time. We collaborated together, we commingled our essence, and we said, let us make man in our image. Let us make Crystal Ann Compton in our image. And indeed, that is what happened. Crystal Ann Compton came into being and now exists in this reality, as well as many other realities. But let's talk about the existence. Where are we existing? We are existing in universal architecture. We are existing in an energetic landscape created by those beings that brought us into being, the Oversouls, the Archangelic, and all of these pure consciousnesses. Not only did they create us in their image, they gave us a place to exist in order so that we could have experiences, as I talked about at the top of this video, why these experiences are so beneficial to a soul. Well. We needed to have a place to have those experiences. And thus came into being the universes, the multiverse, the dimensions, the parallel universes, the timelines. This is how Crystal Ann Compton can exist in 3D reality, but also 5D, 6D, 7D, 8D, 9D, and beyond. And that's just this house. That's just this universe. Crystal Ann Compton also exists within other houses, other universes that do, do not even resemble this one and are not legislated the same way. They're not governed the same way with the same energy. Totally different scenario and game in those houses. I exist there as well. But my true existence, my pure existence is as my oversoul, my I am, that exists outside of this architecture. And see, where we suffer as people and as humans is we begin to identify as the incarnation and we forget that we exist outside of it. We forget that not only do we exist outside of it, we created the container. We created the existence. We created the universe. And so why be afraid to be alive when we have the map to navigate this life? Why feel lost in this life when we can align back to our divine nature and begin running the energy of the I am through the umbilicus that exists within us, which is the spirit. It is a cord, my friend, a cord that allows information to come from the oversoul to us and for us to exchange information and energy with the oversoul, which benefits from the existence. We have a spirit. This is why St. Paul said, what are you going to do to me? You're going to kill me? You can't take away my spirit. You can't change exactly who it is that I truly am as an I am presence. I have no fear of you. I have no fear of this life. I don't care what you do to me because I am aligning with who I know that I truly am. And so we have people who are lost in this life, people who feel futile about their future, futile, or they feel fatigued by being alive, people who are down trodden and depressed and I understand that and I've been in all of those places and spaces and I will probably encounter them again because that is part and parcel. It comes with this dimension 
It's why we chose to come here because this school, again, it levels us up so very quickly and we learn very quickly, but we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to be despondent over. This is our house and we can walk around this house and we can have experiences in this house and we can fully occupy this house, not as the incarnation Crystal Ann Compton, but as the I am Crystal Ann Compton. And God said, let us make man, let us make crystal in our image. And indeed they did. And here in this incarnation, I am fully empowered. And just as the creator created me because the creator creates, so too do I have the urge of my creator to also create in this life because I am made in the image of my I am and I am here to do something of great value. Be emboldened by that. Be empowered by that. Your life is powerful. Your life is compelling and so very persuasive. If you feel disempowered, if you feel weak, this is just an invitation from spirit to get you back into alignment. Do you feel what I'm saying to you? If you feel what I'm saying to you, say, yes, I receive that. Wherever you are on the planet, God hears you. Say, yes, I receive that. We have a lot of people who come against mystics and spiritual people and spiritual teachers and they say, well, science doesn't say that and science doesn't show that. Well, science doesn't show even a fraction of a percentage of all that is possible in this beautiful universe that we created. But the soul, you see, the spirit always bears witness. So if what I'm saying to you is causing a response in you, goosebumps, energy, activation, a quickening, that's your evidence. That's the energy of it. That's how you know it's true because the spirit sings with it. The spirit aligns with it. The spirit longs to be in alignment with the I am, with the divine nature. Can you dig it? Can you hook into it? Can you feel it? It's the key to your freedom. It's the key to living a completely emboldened and empowered life and it's yours now if you want it. You are the created, yes but you're also the creator, not just of this reality, this Crystal Ann Compton, but this existence, this container, this dimension, and this universe. That's who you are, and that is powerful.